What happens if all the supervolcanoes on Earth erupt at once? While that's an un unlikely scenario, it's an excellent question to unravel what the worst scenario on Earth could be. Now, there are approximately 12 to 18 supervolcanoes on Earth. It's negotiable, each one at least seven times larger than Mount Tambora, which had the biggest eruption in recorded human history. If all of these supervolcanoes erupted at once, they'd likely pour thousands of tons of volcanic ash and toxic gases into the atmosphere. The gases would likely fall back to Earth as acid rain, devastating agriculture, and leading to global famine. Now that sucks. Did you know back in 1815, just a little more than 200 years ago, Mount Tambora erupted in Indonesia, killing an estimated 92,000 people. It was the biggest eruption in recorded history. And yet, Tambora was about one-seventh the size of the smallest supervolcano on Earth. There are at least a dozen of these monsters worldwide, ready, willing, and active. The last one went off 26,500 years ago in New Zealand, and that was Oranui. It blanketed most of the island in a layer of thick ash. Now, it's extremely unlikely that one of these supervolcanoes would go off anytime soon, including Yellowstone, which has absolutely no evidence of it erupting in this way, let alone multiple eruptions at once. But for curiosity's sake, what would happen if all the world's supervolcanoes erupted at once? Now, if every supervolcano went off, you would have a hard time finding a safe place to flee to. Because almost every continent is home to at least one supervolcano. For example, there's Yellowstone in the U.S. Nguruguru in Tanzania. And then there's Toba in Indonesia. So basically, no matter where you are, you're shit out of luck. But at least you'll have a warning. Because it takes weeks, typically months beforehand. The ground will tremble with earthquakes. Then when E-Day arrives, the earth-shattering sound will be a dead giveaway that something wasn't right. And this is, well, a sonic boom. Now, when Krakatoa, which wasn't even close to the size of a supervolcano, erupted in 1833, it released a roar so loud, the sound traveled nearly 4,800 kilometers across the Indian Ocean, shattering windows and deafening people in its path. And since even the smallest eruption would dwarf Krakatoa's eruption, there's really no telling how much damage this would cause and how many deaf people would litter the earth. But it would be epically catastrophic, mark my words. And let's say you were lucky enough to survive the first wave of destruction. After that, it would be time to find a fallout shelter because these super eruptions spew billions of tons of ash, equivalent to thousands of all the eruptions you've ever seen in your life. Not only that, volcanic glass and huge chunks of rock, thousands of meters into the air. Not something you want to inhale or be in the path of because apartment-sized blocks fall back to the earth. 
Now, since this cloud of ash doesn't travel up, it almost expands out, crashing out against the landscape at jet fighter speeds. It would collapse buildings, contaminate all the water supplies, bring down any power grids in its path, and the fallout would extend for hundreds of kilometers. And so any nearby cities would be immediate toast as are any planes that attempt to fly people away from danger. And keep in mind that ash travels. When Toba erupted 74,000 years ago, winds blew ash all the way to India. So if all the supervolcanoes go off at once, volcanic debris would spread across the globe almost instantly. And when the eruption ended, the disaster would only have just started because for the next six months or years, much of that supervolcanic ash would linger in the stratosphere and block the sunlight, causing global temperatures to plunge as much as 15 degrees Celsius. That's close to the difference between summer in Rio versus Anchorage, Alaska. In fact, that would lead to a maximum glacial period on Earth. Just little Mount Tambora's eruption alone set off the year without a summer where frost and blizzards plagued much of the Northern Hemisphere. So multiply that by 12 or so. All supervolcanoes spewing that black dust and you got a worldwide volcanic winter for the next few years. Tropical forests which can't handle the cold weather, would die and wither, bringing down the millions of animal species and humans that live there. And it's about to get even bleaker. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Well, in, in addition to ash, those volcanoes also belch out toxic gases like sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. And in this case, all the way to the stratosphere. And for years, just after the winter finally ends, the nuclear quote-unquote winter, those gases would start to fall from the sky as acid rains. When Laki volcano erupted in, 18, in 1783 in Iceland, it rained down so much sulfuric acid that it devastated farmlands and wiped out half of all the livestock on the island. The next year, a, four quarter, a full quarter of Iceland's population died in the resulting famine. So imagine that times 150,000 because Laki is pales in comparison to a single supervolcanic eruption. And say goodbye to civilization because it probably can't survive a decade-long global famine. Unless you're prepared. You have your own soil inside rigid greenhouses and you're ready to survive and thrive. Now there are a few places on earth that, while still suffering from the cold and acid rain and famine, would at least be free from the actual explosions themselves. Like volcanic islands such as the Galapagos or even Hawaii which ironically is famous for its volcanoes. But the thing is, these volcanoes slowly release flows of lava rather than violently exploding. So you could at least enjoy a nice view as a civilization implodes. The Siberian Traps. The Era Caldera, Lake Toba, Lake Taupo. Valle Grande, Yellowstone, Long Valley, La Garita, Caldera. These are just a few of the hot spots. In fact, there are 18, as of now, mapped supervolcanoes. And many of them have recently become active. We're not here to scare you. We're here to give you the worst case scenario and to prepare you. In the magnetic reversal we're going into, there is historical documentation that there are supervolcanic eruptions. Toba. Taupo. Or 
Laura Newey. All volcanic uh, eruptions on magnetic excursions. And they lead to loss of life. Huge amounts of the population die. And it's not because they're scared, it's because they're not prepared. Many of these populations are, well, simply civilians on Earth that don't have the scientific knowledge and nomenclature and preparedness that we do. If you're living on the flanks of one of these babies, there's no hope. But if you're inland, well, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When what would happen if a super volcano goes off? And it will. It's not if it will, it's when it will. Will you be ready? That's boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Be prepared, not scared. It will come. We don't know when. There's no evidence of any super volcano awakening in an eruptive phase now, but they are awakening. At least five of the 18 have shown signs of coming to life. Be safe. We love you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons. We'll be live on this channel at 10.30 in the morning to answer your questions. That's boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it and be safe. We love you. Nanu, nanu, nanu.